Today we celebrate the octave of Easter, second Sunday of Easter. And what is significant about this time is that each of the Gospels for the octave, the first eight days of the Easter season, contains a different account of the resurrection of Jesus. By reviewing the four, four Gospels, we can find differing views of the experience of the risen Christ. So in today's Gospel, it picks up from where the Easter Sunday Gospel, not the Easter Vigil, but the Easter Sunday Gospel uh, left off. We're following the Gospel of John, which has its own unique character. The Easter Sunday morning Gospel has Mary of Magdala arriving at the tomb in the garden. Upon seeing the stone removed from the tomb, she runs to Simon Peter and the beloved disciple and she tells them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. The two uh, run to the tomb and they see the burial cloth there. The beloved disciple went in a second time and saw the burial cloth and the cloth which had covered Jesus' head. And John writes, he saw and believed. And that ended last week's Easter Sunday Gospel. So what did he believe? Where else in the Gospel of John have we heard of burial cloths and tombs? Lazarus, yes, Lazarus. The dead man, John writes this, the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound when the disciples his head and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Well, there's no bound up Jesus here. Not like Lazarus. The tomb is empty. This theme is common to all four Gospels the empty tomb. Now today's passage that we heard takes place later in the day when the disciples are gathered in a locked room for fear of the Jewish leaders. And Jesus' first words to them are, peace be with you. Rather strange. It's not, where were you when I needed you? But peace be with you. Now, how are we as an Easter people, with Alleluia being our song, how are we to make sense of today's gospel passage? To put this in a clearer perspective, let's take a look at the passage from the Acts of the Apostles we heard earlier today. Now, in the Acts of the Apostles, which was written before the Gospel of John, St. Luke, the author of the Acts of the Apostles, tells us the community of believers was of one heart and one mind with each sharing everything in common and caring for everybody. Wow. Isn't that, that's wonderful. How long is that going to last? Well, if we keep reading Acts of the Apostles, we'll find out pretty soon that co conflicts will arise. Even so, this passage about community is a desirable goal for any community. So back to the Gospel of John. After the end of last Sunday's Gospel, but before today's Gospel, there's one verse. We're told that the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary, who obviously ran to the tomb with them, stayed outside the tomb weeping. The gospel tells us, John's gospel, as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said, they have taken my Lord. And I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. 
Jesus said, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? She thought it was a gardener. Whom in the garden? And she said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni. Mary heard and believed. Then she went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Then, today's passage takes place. On that evening of the first day of the week, where the, when the doors were locked for the disciples were, and after Jesus said to the disciples, Peace be with you a second time after having shown them his hands and his side, he then breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. And so now, then it's a week later, John picks up today, the eighth day, and the disciples are gathered together again in a locked room. Still fearful, more than likely, but this time Thomas is with them. So Jesus then addresses Thomas. Remember, Thomas first heard the message from the disciples. First time he heard it was from the disciples. Now he sees Jesus and he hears Jesus. This is Thomas' second encounter with the news of the resurrection. Note that in the Gospel of John, most people do not get the message the first time. It takes the beloved disciple a second time to get the message, the second time he peers into the tomb, to see and believe. It also takes Mary Magdala a second time when she sees Jesus. Also Thomas, and also the rest of the disciples. The second Sunday. Still, Jesus tells Thomas, Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. We are here today, as we close this octave of Easter, here in the church of St. Thomas the Apostle, Thomas represents us in this gospel. Thomas represents all followers of Christ in this gospel today. Yes, we will continue to hear the gospel message and pray the Easter prayers and sing the Easter songs. But like Thomas, like Mary Magdalene, like the beloved disciple, like Peter, like all the disciples, Will we believe in the resurrection? Perhaps. But more importantly, will we as believers, as church, as individuals, as baptized members of the body of Christ, will we believe in the message of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them? perhaps. That may be the more difficult message to believe. Perhaps. <laughs>